Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment as the Tennessee Titans get it done. They go to Jacksonville and they defeat the Jacksonville Jaguars 9-6. I'm now 0-3 when it comes to picking Tennessee Titans games this season. But that is a fate that I will take as my goodness I'm happy to be 2-1. I'm happy to be on top first place of the AFC South. The Tennessee Titans people, I think we're looking at a good football team. And I'm going to tell you why. Now let's start with the quarterback position, okay? Oh, Blaine Gabbard. Okay, look, I don't want to wish injury upon anyone, okay? I don't like when people, when human beings get injured. But luckily, Blaine Gabbard today got injured because you can see within the first drive, okay, within the first number of throws and plays that this guy had, he stinks. I mean, miserably. I mean, it was, he had one of the worst throws I've ever seen. Rolling out to his right, couldn't even hit his tight end wide open about eight yards away. I mean, it was, and then he could not go to the line of scrimmage. I could do this. Honestly, I, I have no throwing ability whatsoever, but one thing I can do with the football knowledge that I have is go to the line of scrimmage pre-snap, recognize where blitzes are coming from, and be able to set up my offensive line, depending on the language of which we're using. I'm not part of the team, so I can't tell you what language I'll use. And be able to set things up to where I can at least have a hot route to throw to, and I can set up the play for something other than complete disaster. Blaine Gabbard can't do that. He'll see seven guys coming for a blitz, and he'll do nothing. He'll leave the five off the alignment, maybe a tight end, and not have a plan of what to do when he snaps the ball. Dude, you gotta have a hot route. You gotta have a hot. What are you doing, dude? He has no idea. So I, I tweeted during the game. First of all, I tweeted Wednesday. Start Marcus Mariota because I had seen him throwing the ball. There were certain videos that were out of Marcus Mariota throwing the ball. I said, Good, he's better than Blake Gabbard. And him being able to throw the ball 15 yards, 15 yards is better than Blake Gabbard, period. And, and yeah, we still started Blake Gabbard today. And, <laughs> and luckily, he got in, he got out of there. Now, Mariota comes in, and what does he do? Okay, what does Marcus Mariota do? He only takes one sack today because he is able, he has the mental fortitude, the mental ability to change things at the line of scrimmage, to be able to set up plays for success. Only one sack today allowed from him. Blaine Gabbard had two. Blaine Gabbard played what? Maybe like six, seven snaps. Marcus Mariota played like over 50. This is ridiculous. And this is yet what happened. Okay, so Mariota at 80%, 70% is incredibly better than Blake Gabbard because he's able to do that. Not only that, I think he was damn good at 80%. I don't think he missed a throw. Now, the throw to Corey Davis was low. Some people blame Davis for that. I mean, he could have came down with that, but I want a better throw there. Outside of that, Marcus Mario threw the ball away. He was 12 for 18. That's the 66% completion percentage. He was hitting guys accurately. He obviously cannot throw deep because he doesn't have feeling in two of his damn fingers. But outside of that, he was good today. And of course, what did he do? He did what he does. He won us the game in the fourth quarter. This is his move. And this is why I pound the table for Marcus freaking Mariota. This is the man that stiff-armed us to the playoffs. This is the man that led us back from 21 to 3 to upset and defeat the Kansas City Chiefs and Kansas City in the wild card. One of the greatest playoff upsets of all time. One of the greatest playoff comebacks of all time. He did this, and today he beat one of the AFC's best. The Jacksonville Jaguars, this is our guy. And I know he had the two interceptions week one. One of them was bad, and the second one was obviously because of the injury. When he comes back healthy, he's good. Now the question is, can he remain healthy? Can we ever really rely upon him to be healthy and to be a franchise quarterback? Can we divvy up and, and devote the money necessary? We still have to find that out. And, and I think throughout this season, we'll find out more and more of that. But make no doubt about it. This guy's good. At a 70%, he's better than Blaine Gabbard. And, and, and period. Okay, now the run game. I, I People have their concerns about the run game, as do I. Um, I don't think we're going to be nearly as good when it comes to the running game that we anticipated. But I don't think we're going to be necessarily bad either. Today, Derrick Henry had 18 carries for 57 yards, about 3.2 yards per carry. Now, that's not great, obviously. 
but this was up against the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line, which is the best offensive line in the NFL. To me, you kind of had to expect this. Now, I would like to see him pop off. I would like to see him have a great game because he has not had a great game yet this season. Neither has Deion Lewis. Again, I don't think our winning game is going to be very good this year, but once we get Jack Conklin back, I think we're going to see better play up front and things should be better there. But again, it is a little concerning right now. I'm not going to lie to you. So our passing game is going to have to make up for it. Can it? I don't know. I'm still not sold on these wide receivers. Now again, Corey Davis. The thing with Corey Davis. Look, when you get him the ball in space, he can make things happen. The problem is getting him the ball because him and Marcus Mariota and other quarterbacks as well, and they're not always on the same page. Corey Davis doesn't, also, doesn't always know what correct route to run, and that it can, it continues to be a problem for this team. Today wasn't a problem, but again, he had the drop today, and it just doesn't seem like it's right upstairs for him yet. Now, hopefully we can get it there because in open space, I like him. And Taewon Taylor, I like him. It's just getting them the ball, getting them open in the right spots at the right moment and then delivering the ball to them that's the problem right now I would still pick up the phone and call Des Bryant because he will give us more than Rashard Matthews is giving us I still want to see a larger sample size but man Rashard Matthews looks done he is not doing anything right now my goodness and Tajay Sharp is limited and he had a horrible drop today these wide receivers are not good. Now, hopefully, Corey Davis can continue to develop. Taewon Taylor can continue to develop. But if we have Super Bowl aspirations, and I think we could, and I think we should, I think we got to call Des Bryant. I really think we have to call Des Bryant. Or at least we have to try to swindle a trade for somebody at the trade deadline. Now, I'm not sure which wide receivers in this league would be available at the trade deadline right now. I haven't heard much in terms of that aspect, so I don't know what you can do. But look, man, this is not good enough. I, I, just, I tell you, and, and again, I hate bringing him up, but man, we should have got Jarvis freaking Landry, who's on pace for 1,500 yards this season. Jesus Christ. Yes. Is he overpaid? Yes. But if we had him, dude, we're, we're good. We're, we're damn good with Jarvis Landry. He's having over 100 receiving yards every week for Cleveland. He's, he, he, you saw his hard knock speech. Jarvis Landry, we could have, God, we could have used Jarvis Landry, but whatever, okay? Oh, and also, we could have used Calvin Ridley. Now, I like Rashawn Evans. We could have used Calvin Ridley, who today had over 129 receiving yards, two touchdowns. I don't know why they didn't recognize the wide receiver as a problem, but dude, this is the thing that's holding this team back. Because running game, it's not going to be great this year. It can still be good, but I can see it's not going to be great. We're going to have to throw the ball, and I believe in Marcus Moriota to do it, but I still don't trust these receivers to consistently catch it. Uh, I still have problems with that because it's obvious that's what's holding us back. But the good unit, the best unit right now for this entire football team, how about this defense? How about these linebackers, these outside linebackers, and to the inside linebackers as well? continuing to cause hell first of all it starts with Jarrell Casey up front right he's still leading the defensive line and Austin Johnson he came in and had a, a nice play today Daquan Jones did some things but then you go to the linebackers again Arakpo was getting more pressure today Derek Morgan was getting more pressure today and then of course our second round rookie Harold Landry he's coming off the edge and he's doing a damn good job we also had Kenny Vaccaro come down and get a sack today Wesley Woodyard he played his ass off today I loved the play of the linebackers. I love the play of this defense today. Absolutely limiting and shutting down Blake Bortles, who stinks. Man, he stinks. And he continues to be the, the, the worst thing about this Jacksonville Jaguars football team. I mean, people, Marcus Mariota at 70% was better than Blake Bortles today. I mean, period. I mean, Marcus Mariota was, was hitting guys. He was having no problems with his accuracy. Blake Bortles couldn't hit shallow crosses. Couldn't hit five-yard outs. I mean, what the hell was he doing? I, the, the Bortles stinks. And they didn't try to push the ball down the field. I don't know why. Because if he would have went Keelan Cole on a nine route versus Malcolm Butler, he probably would have won. But thank God they didn't watch the tape. If they would have watched Tennessee Titans tape, they would have seen over the past two weeks, okay, uh, uh, Malcolm Butler getting absolutely burned by Will Fuller. And uh, I think it was Kenny Stills week one. So I don't know what they were doing. Thank God they didn't watch a, 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 a tape uh, of our defense over the past two weeks as that's where we've been struggling. Ultimately, the defense really good, improved coverage eh, for the most part. I mean, I didn't see too many one on one opportunities. The thing about our defense right now, we're running this Dean P's bend but don't break philosophy. So you'll very, very consistently see them, you know, have the quarterbacks off on first down. 
allowing teams to probably give five, six yards on first down, but then we really, really tight things up on second down, third down, fourth holding penalties, um, four sacks if we can. It's a bit, but don't break. So you're going to see teams move the ball on us, but we hope to then, again, only allow two field goals today, only allow field goals, not touchdowns. That's the philosophy. So don't get too frustrated because you're going to consistently see teams getting five, six uh, yards on first down. He's not going to send too much pressure on first down. DMP is a defensive coordinator, but I like the way the defense is playing. In week one, you know what? I'm giving them more and more of a break because obviously, I mean, I didn't, I didn't want to completely buy into, but I mean, I think it's becoming more and more apparent. The ridiculous stoppages that occurred week one, I think it affected this team more than I even anticipated. I knew it affected it, but they're looking like a better team because they're able to play a full game, a full real game. Maybe that week one loss was a fraud, and plus we also allowed a kick return for a touchdown more because Mario didn't play the whole game. So more and more, I'm thinking we're two and one right now. We could be three and zero if we played a real week one game. So look, I loved it today. What's on for next week? Okay, so here we go. Philadelphia Eagles, who are two and one. However, they are hobbled right now. Their wide receiver play is not happening. Okay, Carson Wentz came at the game today through like nine straight passes to non-wide receivers. Can we guard their tight ends? Now that's a big question. Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz, that's a big question. But if we can do that, guard their running backs. I'm not sure if Sproles will be back or if Jay Ajayi is going to be back. I don't know. But people, I've seen us pull some good wins in Nashville over the past two seasons, including win over Green Bay Packers during that 2016 season. Uh, a nice win last year uh, against some of other good teams that we played as well. Jasper Jaguars in Nashville as well that we were able to defeat last season. Seattle Seahawks week three, which was a big win for us at the time. I've seen us get kind of these games done in the past two years. And by the Wait, we're eight and one in games decided by three points or fewer. Marcus Moriarty has a lot to do with that. Uh, as of right now, I have us upsetting. As of right now, I have us upsetting. Now, don't believe me, because I'm only three big in this team this year. I don't know what's going on with this team this year, but I think I saw enough today that we got to get Marcus Moriarty 100, percent and we got to get the passing game going and rolling. But I think we can really get it done next week. I'm excited. And if we really do, man, I think we're talking about being one of the AFC's best teams and maybe one of the NFL's. I still think it. Now, again, I need to see more from the past game. We need to see more. But I was really happy with what I saw today. Marcus Mariota is a beast. Come on. He's our God, people, period. My goodness. What a nice win over the Jets with Jaguars. And as for the Jaguars, if you happen to be a Jaguar fan and you're still watching, look, uh, you, you shouldn't be too depressed. You lose to us, right? You know, we, we, we bring you in, you know, we put you down on our lap man, and we spank you a little bit that's that's what we do that's what the tennessee titans do i guess it has for jaguars but next week you're hosting new york jets that should be a win you're gonna be three and one maybe we're gonna be there with you maybe not you're still one of the asc's best teams you're still a contender I literally think you just have to hope that you don't face us in the playoffs. I mean, honestly, if you guys don't face us in the playoffs, I think it'll be good. I think I think you guys are actually better than Kansas City right now. I think you guys will slow down Patrick Mahomes at our offense, and then Blake Bortles do enough against that bad Chiefs defense and get it done. The Patriots, you beat them. I really do think the Jaguars are headed to the Super Bowl if they don't face us. But that's the question right now. And we'll see about that. Um, and then one other thing. The Texans stink. They're 0-3. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts are 1-2. And, and guess what next week's matchup is? The Texans versus the Colts. So let them beat each other up next week. I don't know who I prefer to win that game. I'd like for the Texans to be buried and gone. Uh, but if both teams are 1-3, that's good for us anyway. So, Titans and Jaguars, they're the class of the division. Make no doubt about that. But there you go. 2-1 and one, fantasy. Titans 2-1 and one as they defeat the Jets for Jaguars 9-6. to six. Until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment. And I'm out. See you all later.